You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is an American history podcast where each week I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to a guy who has his eyes closed. Oh, 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 no. Gareth Reynolds, who no. has no idea what the topic is going to be about. The praise is going to your head. You did it. People were like, old mm. man. Um, um, look at us. How, back are, in the real how are you? It's weird. Back, now we're back in the thing. Yeah, We've been we're on the road. Van. Not in a van. Yeah. Strange. Sad. Um, we should probably tell people we sleep in the van. Still. Uh, a lot of spooning. Well, we do beyond what spooning. It's called ladling. And we've also said we're not mm. going to define it. So for people no. who are like, what's a ladling situation? We're not going to explain that. We ladle, though. Well, that would ruin it. Yeah. it I mean, uh, going too deep into the ladle, uh, as I like to say, uh, that would sort of spoil what it is. I agree. So... If you're at, if you're curious, we're ladling, and if you're like, what is that tough we're shit? Ladling. And sometimes we say we're ladling gravy. Mm-hmm. Now, have, will you have I'm done like, the intro already? Will that have happened? The intro, yeah, to the to the podcast, yeah. This is it. No, but like the bow now. Hey, Gary. Oh, the the, the music. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the music theme. will come after this fun part. So this, right here. so we're, yeah. So this is kind of like the. Live from New York, it's Saturday. Like, this is our, like, right. So you want to... I think you had it with the... We make... Sometimes we make gravy. And I just said, sometimes we don't even mean to. But maybe what we should be doing is, like, giving a good toss to it. You know? Like, so, like... uh, What do you... And sometimes we make gravy. On accident. And I'll go, well, (laughs) that's the dollop for you. And then we go to the intro. Something like that. So we just got to wait and we're back. For... Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's the dollop for you. <laughs> no, we just came back. We don't have to do Fuck. it after. It's... You do it before. Do you want to? Do you have any of the announcements? I do. Um, well, let's start first oh, of all by saying we have a new podcast called The Pastimes, um, which people love. A lot of people are saying it's to. better than the dollop. A lot of people are saying it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, uh, our guests so far, Karen Kilgariff, Will Anderson, James Adomian. You can listen to it on the, uh, dollop feed. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's basically we go through an old newspaper, like, like some hoarders. Um, and then also if people are interested on how it looks when we do this dynamic podcast, you can join the Patreon. Uh, there's other stuff. We do Q and A's. We do... Lots of stuff. It's pretty cheap, so you can join that. Um, you have any? Is there anything else to say? We can't make the announcement for the other thing yet. I don't think. Mm. Right? No, I don't really have anything to say. I I, I just uh, I love everybody, and uh, I've got congrats more. Congrats to Elon. Congrats to Elon Musk uh, for his triumphs. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty easy to lose half a trillion dollars when you think about it. Um, <laughs> Dave, uh, my special England Weed and the Rest is uh, available for another week on Moment. You can go to moment.co slash Gareth Reynolds. Um, it is a stand-up special, so go check it out. A lot of people are saying And it's my the best rebuttal special. is no, up no, I'm not on allowing YouTube. your rebuttal. That's not a thing we're going to do. I'm not... It's not how it works. It's I, not like I'm giving I the have, State of the Union and then we cut to you to do like a quick sort of like... Here's my problems with some of the stuff. I have an hour rebuttal of it's, Gareth's I, special. I don't want that to exist. <laughs> <laughs> Especially while mine's, like, going. Especially, like, one week into mine. I'm not into you being like, and uh, check out, like, <laughs> what, a, what an amazing move that would be. I do I uh, rebuttal you, hours. Every tell you the time I went on Marin, um, the Here podcast, and I... You know, we talked about my dad a lot, and then my dad listened to it and sent Mark an email uh, demanding that he be allowed to ha- have a rebuttal. Oh my god, that's like when Eminem's mom released an album. <laughs> oh my it god, totally is. Oh my uh, god, that's so hilarious. Good. Well, mm-hmm. sounds like we're ready to dollop. Intro. 
Um, April no, 2nd. No, 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 not done yet, Dave. Uh, I also, um, I, uh, what the hell was it? Oh, yeah. I will be uh, in Hartford, Connecticut at the Funny Bone on January 30th and at West Nyack Levity Live in New York on January 31st. Go to GarethReynolds.com for ticket information. So watch my special and then get ready to see some crap. Yeah, it's half-baked bullshit. April 2nd, I'm talking about this special. Dave! 1965! That's part of my rebuttal. That's bad. Rodney Glenn King was born in Holy Sacramento. Holy shit, no. Oh, my I'm sorry. God. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Oh, good Lord. This is going to be This tough. is a follow-up to our uh, Olympic up. episode. To our what? The, the Olympic episode. Right. The Olympic episode led into how the cops changed during the Olympics, and this is our follow-up. Oh, boy. I knew this one. This is, this is on my, like, list of ten I know are coming. <laughs> uh, uh, so he was born in Sacramento, California. Soon after, his family moved to Altadena, which is right near me. This is, don't make uh, it Where his you. parents... It's about me. Where his parents worked as house cleaners and medical custodians. Okay. Dad was an alcoholic who beat his kids with an extension cord. Come on, do some funny stuff. Uh, look at me. Yeah. I, 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 and, well, it sounds like we're ready to talk. Uh, Rodney later wrote, quote, the first person I ever hated was my father. Oh, my God. Relatable. Me and Rodney yeah, King. We are... Did his dad write Marin a letter? <laughs> <laughs> dad brought Rodney and his brother to work to wash and buffer floors at the Pasadena Medical Center from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. most nights. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's just, you know, when you have kids, it's 1970-something, uh, so why not put them to work as if it's the 1800s? <sighs> Yeah. Why else have kids if you're not going to have them buffer floors at a medical center? Are they are they working or they're just like hanging? Well, he's making them work. Okay, interesting. Sorry, I was doing I was adjusting my camera, but that's great. It's what we call illegal. Mm. Until now, for some reason, Rodney started to do poorly in school. What do you think it was? Lack of motivation. Um, I think it was working till two a.m. every night. Huh. Interesting. Well, I, I'd, lo yeah. I'd love to, for people to email some other theories. He was getting maybe an hour of sleep every night. Holy shit. Is that good? It's bad. Welcome to a cult. Bad. Bad. Yeah. So teachers assumed he had a learning disability. <laughs> and they put him in special education classes. <laughs> Because he's tired. And then he like, gets a good night's he's sleep. Working They're at like, night. now he's, we've really rehabilitated him. He's like, no, I slept. My dad got sick last night. He can't uh, go to work. So this led to him being bullied. It also meant he could not uh, play for the baseball team, the only part of school he really enjoyed. Man, when there's a comedic window on this, I am going to jump through it like I got. You've missed so many nah, the, so like, far. I don't know if there's a lot of plays left on the field so far. So far, this has just been uh, just a treasure trove of hilarity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he started drinking and smoking weed at 11 years old. Fucking A. Which I did, too. I mean... Well, I remember he was on um, Celebrity Rehab. He was on that show. Oh, was he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In high school, a teacher went to bat for him and got, uh, got the school to let him on the baseball team. Then that teacher molested him. <sighs> do, some, uh, do some comedy stuff, kid. Uh, You're the improv guy. I know. I just... Um, I... Um, hmm? No, I'm trying to... There's, some, there's something... I had, I had a moment where I thought the teacher went to bat for him. And well, let me help. Baseball. Oh. Let me help. He was also molested by a cousin. As a senior, Rodney was working episode. a lot. Okay. <laughs> as, as a senior, Rodney was working a lot as a valet, a tree trimmer, a McDonald's cook. He was also drinking a lot. Dropped out of school then. Married his girlfriend. 
A few months later, he was arrested for reckless driving and uh, then beating his wife. Okay. I didn't know that. So he uh, pled no contest, and he got probation. You know, no contest 20... is a weird option. Uh, uh, what's the it other? Is... What's the, what's the other <laughs> option? I'd like a contest, and then you have to sort of <laughs> compete with uh, with the judge or uh, the uh, the prosecution. Uh, I, I've always found that kind of funny to to think of it like that. Like, uh, how do you plead? Uh, guilty? Not guilty? No contest? I like a contest, Your Honor. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'd like to uh, hula hoop the judge. <laughs> I'd like to have a hula hoop competition. <laughs> Uh, contest against the judge. All right, Dave, whenever you're ready. Uh, uh. <laughs> this chair is driving me crazy. It's squeaking like a squeaker. Um, so he uh, he gets, at 24, he gets into an argument uh, with a shopkeeper in a convenience store in Monterey Park. Okay. Now, there were language differences. Sure. Uh the guy said Rodney tried to rob him and threatened to beat him up. And Rodney, uh, Rodney says he was drunk and hungry and just trying to buy gum and food stamps with food stamps. What? Who's and hungry the guy and goes understand. for gum? Well, I mean, everybody has their thing. Sure. But it's not going to, that's, that's the opposite. Of Have you tried it? Yeah. I've been hungry and I've had gum and I'm like, Oh my God, my stomach's now like, all right, food's coming. Have you tried to eat the gum? I used to swallow gum. Yep. What? Yeah, yeah. I used to swallow gum all the time. A teacher, I remember I had a teacher who was like, bro, what are you doing? I was like, doesn't matter. And he's like, nah, it's like terrible for you. I was like, buddy, I'm 14. Why? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just throw it out? You know, sometimes you're like, Ugh, garbage is all the way over yonder. You're like, my tummy's kind of a garbage can that the Lord put inside me. I was tossing in that. You can eat a lot of stuff and uh, treat it like trash. <laughs> so they get into an argument and the shopkeeper hit Rodney first with a tire iron. Jesus Christ. And Rodney threw pies at him. What kind of rebuttal? That's <laughs> uh, terrible. Who, uh. It, uh, that is when you're not uh, ready for the fight. I'll bet it was some of the, well, I mean, it's kind of like vaudevillian, but I would I would imagine it's those little cherry apple blueberry pies. Yeah, those, like, I would think so. Uh, but it'd be amazing. It'd be amazing if, if the there was just, just a, a shelf of lemon meringues. Yeah. I mean, that's what I mean. It's just like a Chaplin movie where it's just like, well, I've got a bunch <laughs> of pumpkin pies done and a few cherries. The tire iron <laughs> kind of throws some of the like comedic timing off. Yeah, I mean that's less funny. Yeah. Uh, so Rodney that be runs the away tyrant, and. By the way. I'm ready to move on. Rodney, uh, he runs away, and 10 days later, the cops come to his house, and uh, Rodney told them he, he's like, yeah, I'm guilty of stealing. And he said later he was, just, he was just really embarrassed the cops were at his home, and he just wanted them to go away, so he said that. So his lawyer is not happy um, that he pleaded to a crime that he didn't really commit. Like, it was right. clearly a, a difference of language, and then, you know whatever was going on there. So he gets a year in jail. Wow. Okay. Uh, he gets out and he gets a new job. Uh, he celebrates. Oh boy. By drinking a 40. Okay. And getting behind the wheel. Okay. And he's driving with two friends. Uh, police try to pull him over and he takes off. He starts speeding through LA streets doing about 65 miles an hour. Which is pretty standard in L.A. Yeah. I, I, that's the thing. I remember when I moved here, I was like, so you're just allowed to, like, fly down these streets? <laughs> yeah, there's no... But back in, the, back in the day, they used to really not... Like, sp like, now there's, like, more speed traps. Like, I've gotten a speeding ticket, you mm -hmm. know? I, but it's like, um, back in the... They, there were never cops, like, just straight up. No. Like, that just was more of, like, a, other parts of the country thing. Yeah. So, when he stops his car, uh, he gets out shortly after midnight on March 3rd, 1991, at Lakeview Terrace. Again, right near me. Just right over the hill. I don't think we should um, make the Rodney King story about you. That's okay. It's about me. Uh, he's drunk. 
He's had 140? There's no drugs. Yeah, he may have had more. Okay. Um, he had a 40 with him. Okay. Um, there's no, no drugs in his system. He's unarmed. There's no weapon in the car. CHP officer Melanie Singer approaches. As she has her gun out. Sure. And she tells him to get on the ground. Why wouldn't you have your Stand, gun out? A guy, a guy was speeding. Yeah. <laughs> he gets on his hands and knees, and she takes his ID, and she's about to put him in handcuffs. When another cop, Sergeant Stacy Kuhn, tells her to back up. Did she have her gun trained on the you... other cop? Back up! Oh. Get back! The you back up! Then a few cops swarm Rodney. One kicked him in the head. Another slammed a baton into his lower leg. Yanni Rodney yelled to Singer, quote, they don't have to do this. Tell them they don't have to do this. Which is not something cops uh, care about. Yeah. They're, the whole time they're probably shouting, stop resisting. Yeah, or just not anything. Yeah. George Holiday, a 33-year-old rescue router manager, so he does, uh, he does toilets. Yeah. He's a toilet Drains. man. Drains. We call him toilet men in the business. Yep. He lived across the street, and he had just bought his first camcorder. And he sees the police helicopter spotlight shining down on Rodney's white Hyundai, and it's uh, surrounded by half a dozen police cars. So he starts filming. Two cops... Uh, sorry. Two cops beat Rodney 56 times in 81 seconds oh. with their two pound, 24 inch solid aluminum Monadnock PR 24 batons. They used what are called power strokes, which is when you use all the force you can muster and wield the baton like a baseball bat. Any other the, story? The baton? I have a joke for that, but. I thought you were better than this. Yeah. The batons have a diamond-shaped groove in them that cuts the skin with every blow. <laughs> Which seems like why I know. So I so, okay, so you're so you're like it, so you're it's you're, it's like we have, it's like you're all designed by an evil cue. Right? You like you're you're giving police why batons that are meant to cut? Yeah, why not? Like, what? Are, what are you going for? Draining them? Well, yeah. I mean, you're trying to make them bleed. Yeah, but the goal should not be the goal. I mean, I'm not. Like, no, I'm not lobbying on the half, half of aluminum bats. But the goal is to incapacitate, not to supposedly cut. Yeah. Suppose, yeah. But if you have diamonds, then it's not to incapacitate, it's to wound. They actually are, uh, they have chambers and bullets inside of them. <laughs> They're very similar to guns. Our new, our new baton has spikes. Yeah. Uh, the video showed Rodney on his hands and knees, struggling, twice impaled from wires with a taser gun, rising and falling while the officers beat him about the head, neck, back, kidneys, ankles, feet, legs. Feet. Uh, the electrocution from the taser was made worse because his clothes and body were soaked with his blood. Oh. So it causes it... So much so that he thought he had pissed his pants. That's how much uh, bleeding he was doing. A third cop stopped, stomped Rodney, and about 10 cops watched with a few of George's neighbors. 23 LAPD cops responded. It, now, it's just there so... Was, it, it, I mean, again, it's, like, obvious, and it's not any better, but it's, like, you know, it's just absurd, the amount that respond to shit. Oh, my God. So we had a high-speed chase, and... Right, a block and a half away, uh, about a year or so ago, and I walked down there just to look. There's about sixty to seventy cops standing around, and they do so for about an hour. And it's like, imagine any other job. Yeah. Yeah, and we're you getting get, and we're getting you, more. You just hang out. We're getting more. Yeah. It's not like we're going like that's pretty stupid. We're like, well, it's not enough standing around, cops. <laughs> so, uh, 23 cops, uh, 
um, four cops were directly involved in the use of force. Two were above in a helicopter, ten on the ground, watching some portion of the beating. Seven check, came and checked out the scene and then drove away. Four uniformed cops from two other law enforcement agencies, the Highway Patrol and the L.A. Unified School District, were also there. For no purpose. Tell me. Yeah. Uh, tell me why the school cops are there. Yeah. I mean, Tell well, me. they're, yeah, well, they're, they're there because, like, man, it'd be great to get to your status someday. <laughs> I can't beat the kids at school. Yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, well, I mean, just even thinking back on the tape of it, it's like, I mean, it, you know, it, it is obviously absurd. Yeah. So Rodney did what he had done since childhood. He, he took the beating until he blacked out, and then an ambulance takes him to the hospital. They broke his cheekbone, his ankle, 11 bones at the base of his skull, uh, damaged facial nerves, knocked fillings out of his teeth. He had over 50 broken bones, including a fractured leg. God damn. I mean, the, pi- oh, the, the pictures driving. post-beating are obviously, like, they're yeah. absolutely insane. I mean, he, he, like, yeah. So the next morning, Rodney's brother, Paul, goes to the police station and asks about the procedure to make a complaint. Like, uh, we're not really doing those, honestly. Uh, uh, what, we, uh, so what are you flagging? I guess. What is it? Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your deal? We, uh, followed procedure. It's not like there's any evidence of what we did. Um, no, no. And, uh, I mean, look, we followed all protocols. No problem. You're, yeah. Um, yeah, your brother drank and drove, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. There was 150 he's, he's, of us. Uh, he's broken. Yeah, no, we are pretty good at our jobs. That's not what... I got to take this. Your job is? Okay, <laughs> there's Hello? nothing... Uh-huh. There's, there was I, no ring. I am aware you're a banana, but uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for this dude to get out of here. Give me shit. Doesn't understand how we operate. Still looking at me, idiot. Um, hold on, I'm gonna pretend like he needs um, to go. Hey, uh, this is my superior, my supervising officer. You need to get out of here. You, what? Yeah. I'm gonna finish this call under my desk. Okay. All right, thanks. I think we're good. Yeah, he seemed to understand. I can hear you. He says he can hear me, but I feel like if I wait long enough, he will take off. So, God, he's st- I can see his feet. I'm looking under the, the part of my desk where there's a little gap. I can, I can hear his- you. Yeah, he's like literally shouting. <sighs> Sucks. This is the worst part of the job. You're a, you're a cop, man. Oh my God. Um. I'm going to pretend that I'm in a helicopter and I'm leaving under my desk. What? I got to go. I'm in a chopper. Get out of here for your own safety. I hate this guy. Sir, get out of here. Okay, I'm, a, I'm gonna, Okay, I'm going. Yeah. I don't. This is like dealing with a four-year-old. <laughs> a four-year-old. So the front desk cop tells him to wait. And after a while, a sergeant comes out and gives Paul a uh, bureaucratic hard time. And then he leaves the room for about 30 minutes. And when he comes back, he asks whether Paul has ever been in trouble. (sighs) He told Paul that an investigation was ongoing and that Rodney was in big trouble. And Paul should try to find the video. Paul should try to find the video? Yeah, so they know there's a video at this point. Does Paul know there's a video? That I I don't understand. I think he's saying... So the cops know the video probably because, like, they've probably seen it. Like, somebody probably sent it to him or something. Yeah, no, I... Oh, oh, I know why. Okay, so... um, So, no, the cop doesn't fill out any complaint form, right? So... George Holiday had called 
the station to offer the videotape to police. Okay. And he told the desk officer he'd witnessed the beating by uh, the cops and asked about the gyrus condition, and he's told the, the LAP doesn't release that kind of information. And the cops seem so uninterested in George's information that George then calls Channel 5, KTLA, and sells it to him the next day. Okay. So they knew, and they told him to find the video. That part I, I don't really understand, but that's what how it went down. Yeah. I, I mean, it might just be their protesting. I mean, I guess they probably wouldn't be too freaked out because they're cops, but they might also just be like, just find the videotape. There's videotape. But why not? Yeah, take why don't you go it? find the video? Why not take it? Because they, because they, they did not care. Yeah, they really thought it wouldn't be a big deal. Yeah. They just were like, "Yeah, so we beat the shit out of someone." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Friday. It's Friday. So it it is broadcast on Monday night against Monday night football. CNN then gave it national and inter- an international exposure, and the beating of Rodney King became the lead story for several days on all major networks. It was, at the time, the most explicit and shocking footage of pre- police brutality ever seen yeah. on TV. Yes. At least in America. Certainly not in South Africa. But LAPD Chief Daryl Gates, did I compare our cops to South African cops yeah, during apartheid? An accident. Oh, that's weird. How could I possibly do that? Except one time a South African guy sent me a message on Twitter, a fan of the podcast, and he said, your cops are exactly like our cops were during apartheid. LAPD Chief Daryl Gates called it an aberration. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. That's why they were so worried when the brothers showed up. They were like, yes, cool that's boy, why they calmly... Never... Oh, boy, we lost our cool last night. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't. Most who had lived in South Central in places like Watson, England, and Compton knew that it was pretty common. If it was uncommon, you would see other cops out of those 23 cops who showed yes. up. You'd see some of them try and interject or stop, not leave. Yeah, not, not watch the show. Yeah, yeah, and then be like, all right, man, it looks like this is over. Over three years, 4,400 complaints have been filed against the LAPD for misconduct, excessive force, wrongful death, false arrest, negligence, and civil rights violations. In 1989, L.A. paid $9.1 million to settle lawsuits. In 1990, $11.3 million. No changes were made to oversight or budget of the LAPD in response to the lawsuits. And that I'm guessing they got more changed. money. Yeah, well, you got to fund them to stop the... The beatings. Yeah. Well, you now need the, cops within the cops to stop the cops. The worse they are, the more money you have to give them so, so they, they can, can not be. Figure out as, how to not be bad. Right. You pay them to be better. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a more bloated budget. More money. Yes. Uh, the way to stop a bad cop is to give him more money. Cash, yeah. hard, cold, you need, hard The cash. best way to stop bad cops is to give them a tank. Yeah. Yeah, and allow them to use swords on anybody, yes. anywhere, and at any every, time. Every piece of Judge Dreddian equipment you can dream up. Yes. A couple weeks after the tape aired, an L.A. County grand jury indicted LAPD cops Stacy Kuhn, Lawrence Powell... Theodore Brezano and Timothy Wind for felony assault. They all pleaded not guilty. By the way, uh, Wind was the, a rookie. The, the gumption to, and uh, no, we didn't do it. Uh, no, you know, what do you got? Like, you wouldn't, got you, any proof? wouldn't you be like? I mean, guys, it's pretty bad. I'm pretty fucked yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't Marty be like? Yeah, I don't know. It seems pretty incriminating. Oh, yeah, that's me. I mean, there's. There's no way we can get off. I mean, it's just they got yeah. it all on video. I know we're cops in America, but come on. This is a, little, a bridge oh, too far. This is bad. Uh, the LAPD fired the rookie while the other three only got suspension without pay. Nearly half the liquor stores in South Central uh, were owned by Korean immigrants drawn uh, by the cheap rent and 
not really needing to speak English and a stock that doesn't go bad. Mm-hmm. So they set up shops in neighborhoods, not understanding that crime was at an all-time high and uh, the police presence was heightened. And black community, if they feel like they're under siege because they're under siege. Mm-hmm. Two weeks after the Rodney King, King beating, um, all this, what's now been years-long conflict between blacks and Korean immigrants in South Central, uh, it comes to a head. On March 16th, 1991, in the morning, uh, about 9, 9.30 in the morning, 15-year-old Latasha Harlins walked into Empire Liquor Market in Compton. And she goes to the back and she grabs a bottle of orange juice and maybe just not thinking about it, she puts it in her backpack uh, with the top sticking out and she goes up to the counter with $2 in her hand to pay for it. That's the cost of the juice. And the cashier, Soon Jadu, uh, the owner's wife, she, because of the way Latasha is dressed, thinks she's a boy. Okay. So she, sorry, there's a mosquito here. <laughs> um, I wish everybody sorry. could see how you just handled the mosquito. The badass. How a kitten would deal with it. <laughs> so soon did not see the money and she accused Latasha of trying to steal the orange juice. She grabs Latasha's sweater, drags her over to the counter, trying to pull her backpack off. Latasha fights back because she's being dragged over the counter while she tries to pay for something. And she knocks soon to the ground behind the counter and then turns around and puts the OJ on the counter five feet away from Soon and walks towards the door. Soon takes out a gun and shoots Latasha in the back of the head, (sighs) killing her. Instantly, in Latasha's hands, $2. It's all on security cameras. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen some of this. Soon argues in court that she didn't remember the shooting. What? What is she a cop? Uh, you know, some things are easy. Then some... <laughs> such a cop. Is she a cop? That's such a cop excuse. That's like uh, so. Look, like uh, even cops uh, are like, look, you're being a little ambitious. Say she had a gun. She I, threw it. Every time I shoot someone in the back of the head, I just totally forget about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that's like, it's so easy to forget. How, how do you not, like, how do you remember stuff like that? How do you it's not hard. come up with a better, like, if you're going to go that direction, how do you not come up with a better, like, that is like, oh, God, they're going to ask about the shooting? Um, yeah, I'm not a, you know, you have to be a little more specific. I don't. Yeah, I don't, that, I don't I recall. Don't remember that. I'm trying to think. You said Wednesday? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> The, you're saying I killed someone on a Wednesday morning? Mm, just not. It does not ring a bell. Nope. All mm. right. Well, good to see everybody. Uh, she said. She also said she didn't know the gun. So she, she doesn't remember shooting. She didn't know the gun was loaded and didn't know she pulling didn't. the trigger was how you fired a gun. So let's let's. She doesn't remember the shooting, shooting, but she she does not know it's loaded. The gun she doesn't remember, and on top of that, didn't know pulling the trigger is how you shot a gun. So she didn't know it was loaded. Also, didn't know how to shoot it. Also, doesn't remember it. Right. And at this point, these are all her, really is good. Her, is her lawyer just kind of like nodding his head, like we got this? Well, this is nailed. I'm glad. I mean, we, I'm glad we practiced. It. These are three of the worst excuses. I'm glad we did a run through together. The defense on October rests, 11th. Honor. On October 11th, 1991, she was charged with voluntary manslaughter, not murder. She shot a 15-year-old in the back of the head as she walked out of the store. 
and volunt- and voluntary manslaughter. What I mean, that's basically just like I was indeed making a gesture of violence towards this person, but without intent to kill. Basically, uh, yeah, I believe right? so. Yeah. How the fuck if you shoot someone in the back of the head? How is that? How are you able to even be like, yeah? But I, I wanted like I was just a warning. I was trying to shoot up in the. Ceiling, I and I accidentally it. hit her. I don't look. Come on, I want to go outside. Judge Joyce Carlin gave soon probation. What the community fuck? service? What and a five hundred dollar fine? No prison. Is it, okay. <laughs> Is that just because of the level of disregard for the? People of Compton. I mean, is that really what it yes. is? Yeah, that's just that's just straight up saying a black life has yeah. no value. Yeah. That's all. That's all it is. One hundred percent. So, black and Korean community leaders uh, denounced the decision. Twenty-six-year-old Korean immigrant Brandon Sheen had just got thirty days in jail for kicking his cocker spaniel. Comparisons were made between the cases. Herschel Hunt wrote to the L.A. Sentinel, quote, Suddenly, everything was very clear to me. In my mind at this moment, a black person's life is not worth as much as a dog. Hmm. This is the part of the Rodney King stuff that people don't put together, usually. Yeah. They're always like, oh, the Korean, the, because the, yeah, you look at the videos, the- and they're like, the Koreans are on top of their stores with guns protecting them. It's like, yeah, there's a reason. Mm-hmm. That, that wasn't a random thing that was happening. Mayor Tom Bradley, the LA Times, uh, CBS, CBS LA, Senate Judiciary Chair Joseph Biden, three of LA's most powerful uh, congressmen, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, the UCLA Law School faculty, and columnist George Will all called on Chief Daryl Gates to resign. Hmm. If you can imagine someone being under pressure for just blatant racism in Los Angeles and refusing to resign. Yeah. Well, I'm also like, when you hear like, like if Feinstein and Biden in that era are like, get out of here, like. Fucking yeah, you gotta You're go. Not. It ain't looking yeah. good. You gotta go. Uh, he refused. "Quote: I will never leave when there is a controversy. I will leave when I choose to leave." Wow. I mean, again, <laughs> it's just like the. I, I, it's like they don't even know they're saying the quiet part out loud. They're just like, "This is the loud part." Yeah, we just had this with our sheriff. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We just we just voted to change the law to be able to fire the sheriff because he was like, fuck off, I'm not going anywhere. What an emotional retirement, though. Oh, it was so great to see the sheriff cry. The Board of Police Commission Commissioners put Gates on inactive duty pending an investigation into the department, and he was furious and refused to accept it. Wait, Gates, one of the officers who beat Rodney? No, the police chief, Gates. Oh, oh okay, okay. okay. So he refuses to accept he refu- uh, the Board of Police Commissioner's decision. None of this works. He appeals to the city council and, uh, and suing the board for illegally convening and overstepping their power to re- remove him, and the city council reinstates Chief Daryl Gates the next day. We have the best city council in America. Just such Don't ever forget gosh. it. Look, all, all that happened was it's just so, so fucking... Yeah. Like, it's monstrous. Yeah, and it's all... I mean, again, it's all... You know, I mean, it is. It's just this this farce of, like, we're, we're your city council. Get this guy out of there. Uh, no. Nah. No. Bradley appointed Deputy Secretary of State and former FBA Director Warren Christopher to lead an independent investigation into the LAPD. So a 10-member independent commission known as the Christopher Commission interviews over 50 experts, 150 community reps, and 500 cops. 
and then puts out the Christopher Report, which exposed a systemic lack of accountability and leadership failure. Uh, the commission recommends 85 reformative changes the department should make, most of which never happen, hmm. if you can imagine. I can't. Shocking. The report exposed the LAPD's racist use of the canine units. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a wide disparity in dog bites and attacks in black and Latino neighborhoods. That's, that, that's like, it's just. <laughs> that's, old, that's, that's, that's old school slavery shit. That's it, it, it's, it, it's, like. It, it is. It's like when, it's just like to empower dogs to be racist is so like hard to process you know like i yeah. know the dogs aren't making the decision but to be like these dogs are by are biting more black people than any like it just is yeah this this should be on the list of things that shows your society has totally failed yeah although some dogs are racist greyhounds are insanely racist well that's because they race so much Thank you. Uh, so the Christopher Report uh, it, it, it tells Gates to step down. Bernard Caymans is a judge who first presided over the cops' trial, uh, but then a new judge is brought in, Stanley Weisberg, and he uh, grants a change of venue. Is so that... it's supposed to happen in L.A., oh. but he's oh, like, shit. man, he's like, you, guys uh, are, that's probably you not can't, for you, guys. you can't, yeah, you can't have it here because too many people know about it. Yeah. So where are you going to move it? Where people don't know about it? Yeah. I love, that is an amazing one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where do they move it? <laughs> he reset the trial in Simi Valley in Ventura County. Oh, wow. Simi Valley is semi-rural, super white has a black population of 2%, and cops called Simi Valley and its sister city, Thousand Oaks, quote, cop heaven. Oh, wow. More than 4,000 active cops lived in those areas. I mean, that's the other thing, mm -hmm. is like, you know, we've gotten so far away from the idea that you police the neighborhood that you live in like, that yeah. adds no stakes to doing a good... Like, if you're just like, I, I just police in this town. Like, you need to have some... Yeah, they need to live to there. It needs to be your town. Yeah. And then, uh, you know... And look, I, I've... My experience with Simi Valley is through baseball, because my son has played baseball against Simi Valley teams. They are the worst, ugliest cheating, run-by-fucking-asshole teams. And they're all fucking cops and cops' kids. And there, was a, there was a guy there was a guy who was t teaching a 12-year-old to cheat as a pitcher, teaching him to cheat, How? Throwing, off, throwing off the people. Uh, so there's only one umpire, so he can't tell which way the pitcher's foot moves. So the pitcher would make his foot go forward a little bit, which is a bock. Uh huh. And then the runner would start to go, and then he'd stop uh -huh. and throw the runner out. Uh -huh. Just blatantly illegal. And so we play in this game against this team, and it turns into this whole controversy. And it turns out the coach is a cop, ex cop, who had been fired for beating up a 13 year old. Oh. Now he is coaching 13 year olds how to cheat. That is fucking Simi Valley in a nutshell. That, Orange if, if, Crush. If, That's if, the name of the team. Uh, Fuck you, Orange oh, Crush. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should have to call the team the cops. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, why would you let a guy who got fired for beating up a teenager to fucking results. coach teenagers? Results, asshole. He gets results. <sighs> uh, so... Right, so it's cop heaven, and that means you're not going to find a person in the, on the jury that is not related to or knows a cop. Right. It's just not a thing that's going to happen. Right. Or is just white. Um, 
(laughs) (laughs) Now, the judge also barred the attorneys from holding press conferences, which leads to misleading media coverage. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's highly speculative. Yes. The trial begins on March 4th, 1992. There's 12, if you can believe this, 12 white jurists. Oh, God. I mean, oh, but they also had one Asian and one Latino. Wait, for fuck's sake, you can't, like, wouldn't you just for optics? <laughs> wouldn't purely for optics? Like, I'm just, let's placate. Let's play placate. <laughs> okay. Okay? Let's have a placation. Wouldn't you just be like, just for the sake of coverage, retrospectives, wouldn't you be like, we should have a black jerk? <laughs> you would think so. You know what I mean? Like, what is, like, not enough. It's uh, not a representation uh, of society or any of, but still, the, yeah. the, the balls. Yeah, no, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, there's never been a bigger setup. Like, it's just. Kuhn and Briseno try to pit themselves against the other two cops to make it seem like Pal and Wind were the only ones who used excessive force. Okay. So they're like, boy, these guys really got out of control. We probably shouldn't have done something. I, when I tased him, I was trying to tase uh, the other guy. thought I, I tased I, him. I, to, I, thought, I thought I was hitting Powell when he was on the ground. It turned out it was King. But I, was, I, thought, I, was, I thought that was, you get what I'm saying. Yes, yes. I thought I was beating up another cop, but it turns out... Yeah, I don't even guy. remember this. That's a great... I'm going with a, the soon actually, move. that works. <laughs> uh, in the video, Briseno was kicking Rodney, and Briseno's lawyer argued he was protecting Rodney from being beaten by Powell and Wind by keeping Rodney down with his foot. Oh, for fuck. I mean, that that's just like... <sighs> I, just the most garbage. Yeah, just like I, you, you see ever. here, I am pushing his head down with force to protect him from getting beaten. I mean, if someone doesn't know how, like, because we're we were alive for this. If someone yeah. doesn't know how, I mean, he was the the pictures of how badly he was beaten are. Obs- it looks like he has elephantitis, like. It yeah, is it's insane. so, like, nobody was preventing anything from going on. It is, his face is as, I mean, again, that's partially why it, like, struck such a chord was, A, there was the video, and B, it's like, I mean, he, he was, I mean, when you saw the after effect of the video, you were just like, holy fuck. I mean, you know, yeah. like, it is crazy. Yeah, um, so... Kuhn testifies that he was in charge during uh, the incident and said it was, quote, managed and controlled use of force. I got to be honest, Dave. I should also. I I really did think that they (laughs) kind of like tried a little bit more to acquiesce. You know what I mean? I thought they played ball a little (laughs) bit more. I did not realize they were just like, just whatever. Go with it. He beat us. Fuck it. He wants the trial on the ground. They basically moved the trial yeah, into a backyard. sheriff's department right, office. Right. Like they, they, it's like having a trial in a fucking police department. That so once that happened, they could say whatever the fuck they wanted. Yeah, right. Yeah, and they're thinking of community standing. Uh, he uh, uh, Kuhn said he was following. Ella, and let's never forget that his name is Kuhn. It's the craziest. It's the craziest part of this. The, the guy's name is a fucking. Slur like it's fucking in. okay, and he was following LAPD policies and training. He said he also tried to stop the baton blows. According to him, he is the one who had tasered Rodney. Also, let's not call them batons anymore. That's what cheer captains have. Those are for parades. They they're are. fucking bats with diamond cutters. Yeah, they're diamond bats. Now. During the 1984 Olympics, These guns as are we covered, <laughs> as we covered in the 1984 Olympics episode, the police had put a computerized communication system in in place for the Olympics. It captures every 
call and everything. So Kuhn had sent a message calling the beating, quote, a big-time use of force. Okay. Powell said, quote, I haven't beaten anyone this bad in a long time. <sighs> but they reported only minor injuries, contusions, and abrasions. I, it's just... 20 minutes, 20 minutes before the beating, oh boy. Powell wrote, quote, Sounds almost exciting as our last call. It was right out of Gorilla's in the mist. What is that part right? What? Gorillas in the mist? What do you mean? What is he saying? It was right out of Gorillas in the mist. It's just insane racism. Is it that I, I guess I <laughs> You're okay. not you're not understanding. I was hoping it is pure... I was hoping that it was like I'm missing a... Okay. Great. So they're amped up to go beat him. So they had just been to a call. Right. And whatever the call was, it dealt with black people. Okay. And he was calling his last call, like oh, dealing with Oh, oh sorry. This. Okay. Sorry. Not, uh, you were confused. He's not talking about the beating. This is before. Yeah, this yeah. Twenty I, minutes. Twenty minutes before he beats up Rodney King, he has described a crime, right, whatever right, situation, right, as right, grills in the right, mist. Okay. This, um, uh, so that that was a call where he went to a black household. That's what he called it. His lawyer um, said this wasn't necessarily racist. <laughs> I mean, imagine and then, saying and then, that, and then, and then and twelve jurors nobody, are just going like, okay. I don't know, okay. sound. Let's follow. Let's follow the thread here. Well, let's, I mean, let's uh, give him. Let's hear him out. Hear him out. Let's go. There's, I could see. I could hear. Uh, could be a bunch of different reasons. Well, there's, there could misty. be a guy like me who's like, I haven't seen the movie, sir. Uh, what happens in, <laughs> sir? Sit down. Okay, just thought that I was. The DA said this. Uh, this showed motive and bias. Mm-hmm. Was Kuhn it because was charged it showed motive assault. and bias? Yes. Okay. Kuhn was charged with assault with a deadly weapon, use of excessive force under color of authority, falsification of a police report, and accessory after the facts. He was looking at a max seven years and eight months. Fucking eight. I mean, fuck off. Like, fuck off. <laughs> like, <laughs> Deputy DA White repeatedly showed the jury the beating video to make his case. He did not call Rodney to the stand because he was worrying, worried having suffered all these skull fractures. He might not remember the details correctly They'd slip up and, and could c- contradict what other witnesses said or what the videotape said. So, you know, he has fucking brain damage. I also would be like I, I would I would use I'd be like, look, ladies and gentlemen, they beat this man so badly that, you know, it might get a little difficult, <laughs> you know. Maybe, but yeah, yeah. I mean, he also, also probably at the jury. is like. I, I also understand the move of being like, uh, no questions, Your Honor. I'd just like to play the video uh, again, please. Yeah. Uh, so, testimony about what happened was uh, just insanely contradictory. The Christopher Report and LAPD Internal Affairs uh, had big differences of opinion on how Rodney acted during the pursuit and after he got out of his car. So the Christopher Report and then the cops who investigate cops. So you know how cops do bad stuff? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, the best way to handle that is to have other cops... Look at, and here's the cool thing is now on TV, if you're watching a cop show, the bad guys are the cops that investigate cops. That's how normal our society is, is that the cops that oversee Wait, cops that, to see who's a bad cop. What do you mean? Any fucking, any procedural police show that you them. watch, yeah. internal affairs are always the bad guys. Always. Okay. They're always busting chops and fucking getting up in the rass and accusing them of shit they didn't do. 
so that's how far how, that's how crazy we are into this cop society. No, we where, are we are so far gone. I mean, enter- yeah. cops as entertainment. I mean, I've thought about this like my brain was poisoned about yeah. what cops are through movies that I saw when I was a kid. And you're like, yeah, it's like propaganda. I, I watched Die Hard on uh, the plane when we were flying somewhere recently. And, you know, it's like, he, I, I, this part, it's just like you watch these movies now and you're like, how the fuck was this okay? Like, he's on the plane, first scene, he's on the plane, he's like getting his bag and they see the gun. And the guy looks at it, he goes, it's okay, I'm a cop. And I'm like, if I heard that now, I'd be like, yeah, it's okay. I don't feel a lot better at all. <laughs> I'm actually, honestly, a little more nervous. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, so the CHP officers who first tried to stop him said he fled at 110 to 150 miles an hour. Right, but it's 65. Well, the problem with that is that uh, those speeds are actually 20 miles faster than his Hyundai could actually go. <laughs> so, did they check his car for a flux capacitor? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the officers said Rodney showed superhuman strength and so, resisted arrest. Now, that's a classic black and, racist fucking trope but, that they throw out there. There's no justification. You could be no. like lightning was coming out of his fingers. It's like, look, he, he wasn't, he, he's not moving. He's not moving. I'm going to actually disagree with you. Li- if Lightning? I mean, he's not moving, so he's not going to be, I, I think you, you. I know, you, but uh, lightning? You, okay. <laughs> it's, that's a problem. <sighs> Damn it. You just could, just let it go. Let, let it go. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's, I mean, that's what he, if they're in Simi Valley, they should have gone with that. Yeah, and he was getting ready to shoot lightning bolts. <laughs> so. The jury's just nodding. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've never met a black man, so I'm not sure. Um, they also said Rodney res- resisted arrest when he got out of the car, which is totally false. He got down on his hands and knees and was about to be cuffed. Yeah. Also, he Coons stopped said, resisting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then he stopped. Explain why his head's broken. Coon said Rodney had not responded to a massive number of blows. Oh, oops, sorry. Whoops. Um, leading Coon to fear he would have to shoot or choke him. I, I cannot imagine being this on the is, jury being like, interesting. Well, this sounds very this scientific. Is pretty, this is interesting. Good insight. Yet at least two cops watching said they saw no need for the beating. Officer Melanie Singer of the CHP said he was trying to comply with commands. Quote, King did not aggressively kick or punch the officers. He was merely trying to get away from the officers. Officers Ingrid Larson. Interesting that the two cops Mm -hmm. who stood up are women. Mm -hmm. Officer Ingrid Larson, who was... Out of the police academy, five days, said, quote, King did not appear to be combative, but merely used his arms to block the baton strikes. She, uh, she's a rookie, sir. Yeah, she doesn't know. Five days in, she doesn't know what's going she on. She doesn't know that we're supposed to beat people, sir. Yeah, she, give her time. Give her time. She's going to come around. Paramedics said he was coherent and not acting violently. Ted Koppel interviewed a juror. The juror said the fact that Rodney did not take the stand made the jury think the video was weak evidence. What the What in fuck the fuck are you does talking that even about? mean? Yeah, what are you That's talking just, about? What? I'm, here's my thing. I'm looking for a way to not convict. So here, I'm here's, making here's what shit that is. up. Here's what that, here's what that juror sense. is saying. Uh, here, to me, here's what she's... like. Here's what is really being said in that interview is... Look, it was just 12 white people in a room. What do you want from us? Like, we got to talking. <laughs> we started saying yeah. some crazy shit because there was nobody there to yeah. referee us. Yeah. It's really bananas. Um, 
The uh, juror also complained that the video was shaky and blurry. What the fuck? So I I, I'm sorry, you're. Uh, so I've seen uh, I've seen Mean Streets and uh, like you watch so you watch Mean Streets and it's all in focus and I can see all the crimes and the stuff that's going on, but when I watch this uh, actual beating of a human being that was taken through the window of a house with a, a brand new camcorder in uh, at night with light shining on it, it's not it's not as uh, You're under- not, it doesn't look like Mean Streets. Look, there were no credits. How are we to know who's who? That's right. He's right. I wasn't. I wasn't I with was him on this. But now to, that I was, hear, yeah, I didn't understand. I was lost. He's white. He's very white. So, anywho, but we're gonna listen to more evidence. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Still, no. Yeah, we're not done. Oh fuck. Uh, This is what the juror said, quote, the cops were simply doing what they had been instructed to do. They were afraid he was going to run or even attack them. A lot of those blows, when you watch them in slow motion, were not connecting. When you look at King's body three days after the incident, not much damage was done. He had 50 broken bones and permanent brain damage. Here's what's remarkable about that. This reminds me when I was in fifth grade. And my teacher goes, uh, asked a question about the reading from the night before that I'd done. I'd read it. And I put my hand up and I gave an answer. And my teacher goes, now, you know what? Gareth definitely did the reading because he raised his hand. But I know that the answer is wrong. So he didn't read properly. And I was like, huh? And that's the same thing with this. This person is so believes this. Because they're willing yeah. to go on record as thinking this is what is real, which is almost yeah. more scary. Well, it's it's so it, it's it's what it, you know. Again, Cop most again. cops, yeah. family families yeah. uh, probably got cops in it. Yeah. But to say so that they follow just, procedure. Like yeah. to be like, I mean, okay, yeah, okay, 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 yeah. So far, everything looks above board. Okay, this looks fine. I don't okay. see anything wrong okay. here. A bunch more cops show up. Okay, okay, sure. Mm-hmm. On April twenty eighth, nineteen ninety two, the jury began deliberating. Uh, it would be five days. They would deliberate. The L.A. Police Commission had its weekly meeting at police headquarters, and a police commissioner asked Gates about his contingency plan for what would happen if the cops were acquitted, and Gates said he had a plan to take care of it. Mm -hmm. But that was not true. Another commission later said, quote, nobody believed those officers were going to be acquitted, so we never asked to see the plan he said he had in writing. He assured us that everything was in hand, but it turned out it wasn't. So even they were like, I mean, look, we're cops. I mean, there's no way. But even this is but, like, come on. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, what's, I mean, it's even Simi Valley. Yeah, can't. even see, yeah, we've teed this up as much as possible, but come on. I mean, come on, what's it like the the guy who coaches the orange, orange Crush? All right, why don't we just, let's. That let's, set let's, of a bitch. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's leave the Orange Crush team alone. <laughs> At 10 a.m., the court said the verdicts would come that afternoon. Chief Gates did not issue a tactical alert. LAPD's 1,000 detectives were allowed to clock out and go home at 2 p.m. What? Many field captains, who are the critical ground-level operation decision makers, were not in Los Angeles. They were 40 miles away at a seminar. Smart. Smart to have that that day. That's smart, right? Yeah. All the guys who would yeah. give orders? Yep. To... Yep. Assistant Chief Bob Vernon was on leave pending retirement. Chief Gates and Mayor Bradley had now not spoken in 13 months. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. What? What? Why hasn't how, he been fired? How have you not why? even talked to him? 
Hey, man, that was fucking they- crazy. <laughs> fire him. Yes, fire him, but also, what? What the fuck? Ta- you haven't talked? Who? I mean, imagine seeing fire. that and being like, eh, I well, hope he's doing all right. On April 29th, 1992, all four cops were declared not guilty. The charge they couldn't agree on uh, was Powell's use of excessive force. uh, It was a hung jury. Cops in station houses across Los Angeles cheered as the verdicts were announced. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. At Foothill Station, Officer Karina Smith pumped her fist in the air and told the LA Times, quote, I'm elated, absolutely elated. It's like this sick feeling is finally going away. Ugh. To, to, to find fi- a way to victimize your occupation yes. in this story. She, it's amazing. It, it's, she... <laughs> it's, it's like... It's, yes, it's, they're... It's, they're it should be studied. It's not possible. Well, it's amazing that they think like, oh, they're innocent, so everything's fine yeah. now. Or, or like, to, oh, no, we won. Yeah, like, to, to, I think that's what it is. To, to frame it in such a binary way where it's just like, like it should, the, you're, you're the law enforcement. You should be like, how do yeah. we, we need to learn from this. But to be like, boom, got him. Much as what they are, yeah. right? they're it's us against them. Yes. Uh, another said, "Quote: I feel the truth came out." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, they were fucking Nazis. Well, you can anything can uh, you can get people to believe anything. <laughs> consensus consensus at LAPD headquarters was that they still had enough community support to head off any significant protests so they could now get back to business as usual. Beating people. Beating the shit out of people. But Chuck D of Public Enemy said, quote, it was like throwing a match in a pool of gasoline. Well. That's right. In South Central, people ran, people ran into the street screaming, Rodney King, Rodney King. A crowd began to form, bringing LAPD patrol cars to the scene. When two cops tried to make an arrest, they were circled by a crowd throwing rocks and bottles and chanting, fuck the police. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the lieutenant on scene ordered his cops to retreat, and hundreds of people now were either watching the show or part of it, Drinking beers, sipping cokes, and milling about like it was some kind of urban beach party. One snarled into a TV camera, quote, fuck y'all, we killin'. Wow. Another said, quote, cops gonna die. Wow, man. It is, uh, I mean, it's like, how do you, you know, I don't know how you, uh, what the fuck do you expect? By the way, by the way, a cop, this just happened uh, recently. A cop that works in South Central was followed by a gang. They learned where he lived, where his kids went to school. They learned everything about him. And then they followed him up to Santa Barbara because he was working as security for one of those party bus things. Mm -hmm. And as he was at the back door putting people on the party bus. One came up in front of him and tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around and then two other guys attacked him with baseball bats and they beat the living shit out of him and almost killed him and had to be dragged off. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Targeting like specifically targeting. But I mean, yeah. you know, like, you know, it's when you it's, when you but, never try you know, to solve problems, things are going to compound. Yeah, no, that 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 seems like a natural offshoot of what's happening. Yeah, it's of course, progression. There's yeah, the violence leads to violence. Yeah. I mean, um, so 
Yeah, if when the jury had, like, found them not guilty, that cop had said, fuck, really feels like it's time for some deep introspective reflection. <laughs> and we need to figure out how a system can allow something like this to happen. I'm happy that the people that I work with are going to be okay, but I really feel like there are s- s- systemic problems that allow people to feel like this is all right. This can never happen again. Instead, boom! Oh. Dynasty! <laughs> yeah. Um, at Florence and Normandy, young men dragged a white truck driver, Reginald Denny, from his 18-wheeler. One put a foot on the back of his neck as others took turns, slamming an oxygenator into his back, pounding his head with a hammer, and smashing a concrete block into his face. TV news helicopters circled above, broadcasting that just after 6.30 p.m. on April 29th that the 1992 Los Angeles riots had begun. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah, and I Other mean, unlucky and 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 when that happened, white people were like, "Holy fuck!" Like that. Do was... you know what's amazing is I was in Santa Barbara in college, and while the trial was going on, I would be like, "Hey, to my roommates, hey, we need to watch this," and there <laughs> there were two girls, <laughs> and there was something very important happening on a soap opera, and they were like. No, and I'd be like, this is like one of the biggest trials in American history. Like, if this goes wrong, it's like going to be insane. And they were, <laughs> they wouldn't let me watch it. They were t- <laughs> but it just shows like how distanced people wa- yeah. were from reality. Like, just like, well, it, yeah, I mean, that, it's a trial. It's, it's the a- same, same, same now, basically. I yeah. Mean, there, there's this, this is over and over again. And people have either, they've just probably gotten better at burying this shit now. Uh, other unlucky hey, white, hey, Asian, Hispanic. Hey, hey. What? 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 What is what is cat doing? Explain what cat is doing. I don't want to. Explain what cat is doing. Eating hair. Keep going. What kind of hair? His. Keep going. He's eating his hair. Stop. Keep going. You have to yell at your cat not to eat hair. Yes. My God, that cat needs to eat. He's eating himself. <laughs> Just look. It's- He's so. What? We've hit a new level. Just We've hit a new shut level. up. He's eating himself. He's not eating himself. Stop saying that. God damn it. Uh, other unlucky white Asian Hispanic drivers crossing the intersection ducked concrete rocks, bottles, and baseball bats that shattered their car windows. Groups of young black men surrounded cars, pulling open doors, dragging people out, robbing, beating them. Downtown, a large, angry mob, many who were white, including people from the progressive labor and revolutionary communist parties, massed in the downtown civic center. 300 marched down the civic center streets, chanting, no justice, no peace, throwing rocks, rolling over and setting on fire an LAPD patrol car and demolishing a Rolls Royce. Okay, and so far. I'm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm waiting for a so problem. Far. Okay. Okay, what's that? And torching small, cheap coffee shops and taco stands. God damn it! There you go. There Leave the taco stands alone. If there is anything innocent that should never be involved in any violence, it is a taco stand. Well, yeah. That is that is like hollowed ground. That is in in the movie Highlander, you can't kill another guy in a church. That's what Look, a taco we're, stand is. We're done is. with Highlander references. No more. Keep bringing People them back. I loved your impression. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> they smashed they display windows, looted, <laughs> looted, a bri- looted a bridal shop, a radio shack, and shattered every ground floor, ground floor window of the LA Times building. Yeah. Uh, uh, other stayed at Parker Center, which th- was the LAPD headquarters, facing off against a line of cops in riot gear. They threw eggs, bottles, and aluminum cans at cops who held their positions as they were hit. Protesters screamed in their faces. A kiosk in front of the Parker Center was set on fire. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Flaming kiosks. Sure. An American flag was stomped on and burned as dusk settled in, protesters started throwing rocks through the windows above the center's entrance floor. So now they're just attacking the police station. Yeah. 
Which is how it should be. That's actually that, where your violence well, should that, go in that, this instance. That really is. That's like because because it's so easy to fog the stuff that you're doing. That is why, yeah. Like because when you think about the the Black Lives Matter protests, everything gets framed as government property and damage to like businesses and stuff. And so you do need to be very targeted with like what you're trying to do with violence. It's obviously very difficult when you're enraged and also what you have access to and what's protected and what's off limits. But that's how they like water down the message is by... Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I know. If you don't do it, they're going to do it. Uh, yeah, if you don't but, do it, they're going to do it to their own property. But it's better... They'll set... Right, yes. It doesn't well, matter. Well, no, they, they did do the that. The cops... There's footage of them. The cops doing. and the BLM. Yeah. Yes. But so, it's like... So that's actually not... But if you, you, are, you shouldn't, but uh, but you like you're saying, it's a better instead of a taco shop to go at the fucking cop shop. Yes, that's ideally, but yeah. that's all, all bets saying. are off. Yeah. Like you, but like there's there's no there's no like no it doesn't even it doesn't even matter because it's not like reality gets reported by that side anyway. Like it right it, that's it's right. irrelevant because the stuff you even the stuff you read now is just like. I mean, January 6th was caused by Antifa. Like, it's totally, yeah. it, the reality doesn't matter, but that is right. obviously like, you know. I mean, ideally, like in Milwaukee, when they burned down the police station, yeah. they did a poll and the majority of Americans were like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, I mean, and we'll never, you know? I mean, we'll never, we'll never get back there because it's so propagandized now. And yeah, it's, I mean, you know, but that is, better. um, yeah. So 50 sergeants got on a bus and headed to make a makeshift command center in South, South central in a metropolitan, metropolitan Man, transit. They only bus knew yard. there was a sergeant bus. Oh, sergeant bus. Oh That's God. the movie. Sergeant Bus trying to get through the riot. Oh, my Lord. And people being like, this is full of sergeants. Like, guys, it's not great. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, uh, all the sergeants on the bus, we spray painted Sergeant Bus on the side. So, so we you put know. one of those little white sheets of paper up front that says bus of sergeants so that people will move. <laughs> we got to figure this out, guys. Yeah, we got to get you through there fast. Uh. The, the the bus yard is just chaotically overflowing with more and more cops and, and fire trucks and everything. Several motorhomes arrived to serve as central dispatch dispatch stations, but no cops have been dispatched. Right. <laughs> Command level officers. This is like from Die Hard LAPD, with a vengeance. Yeah, it's really insane. They're, they're there, but no one knows who's in charge. It's just. A mess because all the guys are right forty miles away Done. at a seminar. Yeah. The LA Times quote for ten miles between Santa Monica Boulevard in Hollywood and Manchester Boulevard in South Los Angeles, a vast area had become a holocaust of fire gutted buildings and shattered glass. Jesus Christ. Apartment buildings, beauty salons, mini marts, liquor discount, and clothing shops and storefront churches were going up in fires. The next day at a news conference, Chief Gates said, quote, One of the things that overwhelmed us was the number of fires that occurred and the attacks on the firefighters. It simply became impossible for the firefighters to go out and do their jobs without police protection. Our resources were engaged with the fire department and protecting the fire department. I like how that, of course, was oh, sorry. a complete lie. Well, even it's like this, like, well, it was very difficult for us to strategically figure. It's like, bro, this is all a reaction to all the missteps. There's not one proper move that has been made so far by the police. Yeah. No, it's a total disaster. But in, in reality, he so he says this, right? Yeah. But in reality, the fire chief had requested police escorts to fight fires, but the LAPD denied the request and told the firefighters it was, quote, not a top priority. So he what uses... What? 
he he uses the excuse that they are out there protecting the firefighters when in actual reality they told the firefighters and he to shouldn't even off. be in the position like he's been basically fired uh, it, 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 it it's so like it's so it's so impossible <laughs> and it's only worse but it's just like <laughs> It's just so fucking impossible. Yeah. The riots moved out of South L.A. and snaked along the Wilshire Boulevard corridor into Koreatown up to Hollywood Boulevard. Looters are ransacking the the tourist shops and other stores, uh, including uh, Lingerie Emporium Fredericks of Hollywood. Mm. So that's that's fine. I mean, that is an interesting riot spot for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's great. Look, get your lady something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or just like, whatever. Grab a hot mannequin. Um, grab a hot, yeah, grab a hot mannequin. I'll tell you. The writing uh, went into Baldwin Hills, home of many of L.A.'s middle class and wealthy African Americans. In the southern suburban communities of Culver City, Compton, San Pedro, Long Beach, commercial streets are being plundered. Uh, same thing uh, in the north and east, El Monte, Pacoima, Pomona. So it's just uh, that this is a massive area that I'm that I'm describing. Mm-hmm. It is extraordinarily large. Yeah. The L.A. Times quote: During the day, the crush of looters trying to get into and out of store parking lots would create gridlock in many areas of that the is city. Crazy so there to are tra- have riot, tra- there are riot like traffic, like looting traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do the chopper traffic report uh, for that? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. If you if you're going to be uh, looting uh Fredericks of Hollywood, we recommend you come in from the north and uh right. I would definitely uh, It is like having to have <laughs> chaos rules. Like guys, please respect the enter exit zones. You know what? We just got too many people here at the Circuit City. If some of you guys could back up or, or we could like, do two lanes. Don't steal the validating machine. We all want to park for a dollar. <laughs> Over the next five days, there were 3,600 fires, 1,100 destroyed buildings, 4,500 businesses were looted, damaged, and or destroyed. Half of those were Korean-owned. But now you know why. Yeah. And a billion dollars in damage was done. Hundreds of thousands of residents lost electrical, water, phone service, bus service. LEX was closed. Uh, the mayor declared a state of emergency. He called on the state to send troops, uh, and he instituted a citywide curfew, sunset to sunrise. Mm-hmm. President George H.W. Bush told the nation he would, quote, use whatever force is necessary to restore order. Right. Because... It's, what a fucking crazy thing to say. Well, I, what got us into this is not force, so let's use some force. <laughs> <laughs> it took 20,000 uh, cops and military forces to stop the riots. There were 16,291 arrests. Wow. Half were Latino, a third were African American. Many of the targets of violence were Latino immigrants or perceived immigrants and Korean shop owners, shopkeepers. So that's the other thing. Like, that's another aspect of the. The, the race problems in Los Angeles, I think they're a little bit better, but black Latino uh, th- really issues, especially like massive school wide brawls, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, pretty serious issues. Mm-hmm. Um, over 7,000 National Guardsmen and over 3,500 federal troops from agencies uh, like the FBI, SWAT. U.S. Marshals, Immigration and Naturalization Service, ATF, Bureau of Prisons, mobilized to help the local cops. Mass arrests uh, and criminalization of the city's black and brown residents, of course. Local officials and the Bush administration blame the violence on gang members Mm -hmm. and criminals. Mm -hmm. Not the inciting incident. The cops who beat up the guy. Yeah. 
So mass arrests targeted areas that had been punitively punished by police since the 1970s. So that's what you do, right? You crack down on the, the people who were lashed out in anger at the mass beatings they had been experiencing yeah, for that's years. How, yeah, yep. that's, how, that's how you solve a problem. Yeah, that's exactly how you do it. Yeah. Between 1987 and 1992, California increased criminal justice spending by 70%. Oh, fucking A. I, again, I mean, it's like, I, I never, I mean, it's what we deal with. I mean, it's what we're just actively dealing with. But it's like, who sees yeah. this? And some people do. But it is just like, we need more. Well, this is, that, that's before. That's what led up to it. Oh, that wait, that was before it? Yeah. Wow. At least 25% of black youth in South Central had some sort of criminal record. By framing the uprisings as lawlessness, criminality, illegality, officials justified more punitive responses of aggressive because, policing, mass Because they keep, they're always able to report crime is a problem and, and white people fucking are like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> they that's always the, That's right. actually the sound. That's the natural sound of white people in nature. Oh, my God. Nature. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Bagel. Bialy. Oh, my God. Lemonade. Oh, my God. The longest waiting time for a table. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I just like so sick of having to fill my tire. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just I, it has been it is supposed to get here yesterday. It's been two days. Oh my god! Oh, it's oh been my the god. worst. Oh my god! I keep oh. getting this guy's mail. Oh my god! It's just a nightmare. <laughs> That's the other. It's a nightmare. A nightmare. It's been a nightmare. And. I call it an uprising because it was an uprising. I mean, yeah. a, my, fa- my I used to work at the comedy cellar a lot, and the owner, who's now the owner, I referred to, we were out drinking, and I referred to it as an uprising, and he lost his fucking mind. Was- he lost, he was, it's, it's a fucking riot. It's not a goddamn man. It was like, oh, so you're crazy racist. Um, so, the L.A. riots ended with 54 deaths, 2,383 injured, 41 were killed by gunshot. There were tons. I, this is, uh, there were tons of drive-by shootings. Like, mm-hmm. I think it was like 65 people were shot just walking down the street. People were just out shooting mm-hmm. at random people. Yeah. Like, it, had, it was not targets. There was just like a guy walking down the street. Of uh, injuries, 198 gunshots, 57 stabbings, and over 400 broken bones, concussions, and uh, serious cuts. An Inglewood blood told journalist Mike Davis, who RIP, one of the best, quote, Rodney King, shit, my homies be beat like dogs by the police every day. This riot is all about the homeboys murdered by the police, about my little sister killed by the Koreans. About 27 years of oppression. Rodney King, just the trigger. Dale Grace was forced to resign in June 1992. What do you mean forced to resign? Why the fuck wasn't he fired? Do you not? How well, do, what the fuck yeah, just happened? Well, that is a, it is really ridiculous. Well, I mean, the difference would be, right, that there's probably some benefits or something. I, I don't, I, like, I benefit. I don't get he. I know he's a total yeah. fuck up. No, like you don't. Fi- you don't. Fi- I mean, it, it's that. You know what? That is one of the seeds that we see flourish now, where people just aren't going. They just aren't. There's no more not. resigning in shame. There's no more admitting wrongdoing. They just wait it out, and that's what you do. You just say, "Nah, I'm not gonna go." Nah. No, no. Yeah, we have we have a uh, we have a situation here where we have, um, you know, the uh, three 
three city council people caught being super racist. Um, the one ret- one bailed. She had to. She was like really racist. Another guy's his his terms almost up. And then, but the other guy's just like, I'm not yeah. gonna go. Yeah. And everyone's like, Dude, you're a crazy racist asshole. He's like, Yeah, but, but you know, I've learned a lot. I like it. I've learned a lot. Yeah, I've had did some soul searching, and uh, I I I like it here. So, so followed pretty much what I'm supposed to do. I think so. So, oh my God, did you guys hear uh, about the Qatar World Cup? <laughs> Let's talk about that. In 1993, Stacey Kuhn and Lawrence Powell were found guilty of violating Rodney King's civil rights. Mm -hmm. So the feds went after him. Um, They got 30 months in prison and did not return to the LAPD. The other two officers, Timothy Wind and Theodore Brasino, were both fired by the LAPD. Which e- even now, Rodney I King, mean, that, that, that now doesn't, you know, that shit doesn't happen yeah. that often now. Well, th- and then I actually didn't look into this, but what, then what, then which police department did they end up on? Yeah, it's right. not like, yeah, right. when you get fired from the yeah. police department, you should never be able to be... You're barred like, from they, the like job. Like fucking, like, what about, like, you have a credit report. If you don't pay your fucking bill, yeah. then you can't go Buy a fucking car. Well, why that doesn't work for cops? Coffee at Burger King and they fire you. You're going to have a pretty hard time getting another Burger King job. Yeah, they're probably yeah. like, ah, no, you pissed in coffee. Rodney King was awarded three point eight million dollars in a settlement. All went to his lawyers and medical bills for reconstructive surgery. He bought a modest house for his mother and one for himself in the suburb of Rialto. He occasionally spoke with at-risk kids at the request of police. Let's just say he was a super nice guy. I mean, he was uh, obviously had a fucked up childhood. And in his younger years, you know, that that's what leads to crime is when you don't have a future. But he was like, that's well, that's you know like what insane else? that he's. You know, the other thing is that like. We do this thing where, like, remember when he said, can't we all just get along? Yeah. And, like, he was, like, saying that as, like, a plea. And it became, like, a punchline. It was, like, in people would say that as, like, it was, like, it was one of those sort of, like, cultural callbacks that was used as a punchline. And... Yeah. It like, you know, like there's so much of that, but that one is really fucked up because, you know, it just shows how, you know, like nothing was learned really because that was like a guy who's like, you know, had his life taken away by this and had the maturity or, or I guess like it's almost absurd to just call for peace in that. Like, that is such a... Yeah. Amazingly... It's just such an amazing gesture. And not only did nobody take note of it, he probably fucking regretted saying it because it was, like, a thing that was, like, used in, like, movies or sketches or stand-up as, like, a, you know, like, it became a punchline. So it's, like, not only do we ignore the message, but we mock... The messenger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So he continued to struggle with sobriety. Um, He was engaged to be married in June 2012 when he died. He was a skilled swimmer and surfer, but he was found unconscious at the bottom of his swimming pool. His autopsy showed drugs and alcohol in his system. He was 47. (sighs) Uh, reach research was done by Sarah June sources blue by Joe Demonic, the contested murder of Latasha Harlins by Brenda Stevenson above the law by Jerome Skolnick and James Fife, the riot within by Rodney Glenn King hmm. policing Los Angeles by Max Felker Cantor, the Atlantic, the LA times NPR 
uh, documentaries LA 92 on National Geographic, LA Burning, A&E, Burn, Motherfucker Burn on Showtime. Yeah, I mean, I, I've known that we were going to do this one, and it's like, it is so, you know, it's just... I mean, you have to do it. Yeah, but of course, it's just... but it, it is like, you know, it's just awful in so many ways, but it's it's... I mean, it's easy for a fucking white guy to say it, but it is particularly awful because it's like, could have been a moment. Nothing. Nothing's changed. It, it could have been a moment it's to worse. learn. You could have. You could have. In in some way, well, it could have. So was nine yeah. eleven. So was the housing yeah. crisis. Yeah. Like those are um, all moments. Yeah, and to, we just. It's like we've been given. We've been given every single big problem in our society. Right, cops. Nineteen ninety two. Uh, is when it blew up, but that's always been a problem. Um, finances, uh, 2008. Uh, our foreign policy, 2001. Nothing. We don't do any. We, as a matter of fact, Stolen we double election. down on the wrong shit. We double down on the wrong shit. Elections, yeah, it's election all, theft. I mean, that's 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 2000 election yeah, theft. That's what I mean. Every single ch- every single fucking chance we had to correct this and do something right, we have done nothing, Never. and now we are where we are. Yeah. No, it is totally true. It's and and it it's it is, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you think like I, Occupy Wall Street. Like there there are these like, you know, they're the embers of. But I, it is true. They they just wait you out. They are just wait. They're able to wait it out, and until everyone is just like, I mean, fuck this, uh, you know, or a the, mass, the crime bill, but. Yeah. Biden's crime bill was in 1994. So we, so that, as opposed to like, yeah, the other way. And now, the other way, the most incarcerated people in the world. And now, and what's the response now? Put 100,000 more cops on the more street. More money like, for cops, yeah. No, there was never, there, there was no, you know, people. Are, <laughs> it's just so fucking ridiculous. It, it just, you know, people don't ever really learn the lesson and it's because they do a very good job of I mean beyond that the show Cops flourished and yep. became a huge show and it did embolden you know mental illness as a highlight like someone answers like a yeah. drug addict became a criminal a the, you know the stuff that stuff that should not be viewed as criminality. People who need help. Like I, I have yeah. situations in my that's family what, where it's like, that's what cops should be called. People who need help. Yeah. Yes. But there, there are when you, 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 and it's so easy to give people a criminal record and then they're in your system. Like that yeah. is not that hard to do. And when you do that, you are make, you are declaring war on a class of people that we want you in the system, and it's so obvious why you want people in fucking jail. It's not to help them. It's because you want free fucking labor, and you, you know, I mean, this is, it's, when you watch, when you see, all, like, the web of it all, you just get people in the system. It's harder for them to get out. You make them poor. This leads to crime. This leads to free labor. This is why we build prisons for profit. And this is why we have the the nightmare system we have. There is no, yeah. There is no. I mean, what what is what what else can you do, except just try to like take care of yourself? And that's what everyone is doing. Yeah. But I don't know. That guy's life is so sad. It's so sad. It is. Because I mean, it's a great example of like you know. He had no, he had no chance. Yeah, he he didn't have a chance. No. Like he, it just there was nothing. There was no one there to help him or save him. No. from the beginning, there was one teacher that helped him and and then turned out to molest him. Yeah, like that's, yeah. <sighs> Fuck. It'll never. At least at least there'll never be riots again because yeah, everything's no, that fixed. Ended. That's over. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, I mean, right. yeah. All right, whatever. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Thank God. <laughs> I'm gonna eat my own hair. <laughs> Pete's out.
You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is an American history podcast where each week I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to a guy who has his eyes closed. Oh, 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 no. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. The praise is going to your head. You did it. People were like, old man. Um, um, look at us. How, back are, in the room. how are you? It's weird. Back, now we're back in the thing. Yeah, We've been we're not on the road. The van. Not in a van. Yeah. Strange. Sad. Um, we should probably tell people we sleep in the van. Still. Uh, a lot of spooning. Well, we do beyond what's spooning. It's called ladling. And we've also said we're not mm. going to define it. So for people who no. are like, what's a ladling situation? We're not going to explain that. We ladle, though. Well, that would ruin it. Yeah. it I mean, uh, going too deep into the ladle, uh, as I like to say, uh, that would sort of spoil what it is. I agree. So if you're, at, if you're curious, we're ladling. And if you're like, what is that? Tough we're shit. Ladling. And sometimes we say we're ladling gravy. Now, have, will you have I'm done a, the intro already? Will that have happened? The intro? Yeah, to the... To the podcast? Yeah. This is it. No, but like the... Bound out. Hey, Gary! Oh, the, the, the music? Yeah, yeah. No, the, the music theme. will come after this fun part so this, right here. So we're, yeah, so this is kind of like the... Live from New York, it's Saturday. Like, this is yes. our, like... Right, so you want to... I think you had it with the... We make... Sometimes we make gravy. And I'm not, I just said, sometimes I don't even mean to. But maybe what we should be doing is, like, giving a good toss to it, you know? Like, so, like, uh, what do you, and sometimes what? we make gravy on accident. And I'll go, well, <laughs> that's the dollop for you. And then we go to the intro, something like that. <laughs> so we just got to wait And we're back. For, oh, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> that's the dollop for you. <laughs> no, we just came back. We don't have to do Fuck. it after. You it's... do it before. Do you want to? Do you have any of the announcements? I do. Um, well, let's start first oh, of Christ. all by saying we have a new podcast called The Pastimes, um, which people love. A lot of people are saying it's to. better than the dollop. A lot of people are saying it's fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, our guests so far: Karen Kilgariff, Will Anderson, James Adomian. You can listen to it on the uh, dollop feed. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's basically we go through an old newspaper, like, like some yeah. hoarders. Um, and then also if people are interested on how it looks when we do this dynamic podcast, you can join the Patreon. Uh, there's other stuff. We do Q and A's. We do lots of stuff. It's pretty cheap. So you can join that. Um, you have any, is there anything else to say? We can't make the announcement for the other thing yet. I don't think. Mm. Right. No, I don't really have anything to say. I I, I just uh, I love everybody, and uh, I've got congrats more. To Elon, congrats to Elon Musk uh, for his triumphs. Yeah, it's awesome. It's pretty easy to lose half a trillion dollars when you think about it. Um, <laughs> Dave, uh, my special England weed and the rest is uh, available for another week on Moment. You can go to moment.co slash Gareth Reynolds. Um, it is a stand-up special, so go check it out. A lot of people are saying. And it's my the best rebuttal special. is. And up I'm not on allowing YouTube. your rebuttal. That's not a thing we're gonna do. I'm not. It's not how it works. It's I, not like I'm giving I the have, State of the Union, and then we cut to you to do like a quick sort of like. Here's my problems with some of the stuff. I have an hour rebuttal <laughs> of Gareth's I, special. I don't want that to exist, <laughs> <laughs> especially. While mine's, like, going. <laughs> Especially, like, one week into mine. I'm not into you being like, and uh, check out, like, what, a, what, a, what an amazing move that would be. I do I uh, rebuttal you, hours. Every time you the time I went on Marin, um, the Here podcast, and I, you know, we talked about my dad a lot, and then my dad listened to it and sent Mark an email uh, demanding that he be allowed to ha- have a rebuttal. Oh my god, that's like when Eminem's mom released an album. <laughs> oh my it god, totally is. Oh my uh, god, that's so hilarious. Good. Well, mm-hmm. sounds like we're ready to dollop. Intro. 
Um, April no, 2nd. No, 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 not done yet, Dave. Uh, I also, um, I, uh, what the hell was it? Oh, yeah. I will be uh, in Hartford, Connecticut at the Funny Bone on January 30th and at West Nyack Levity Live in New York on January 31st. Go to GarethReynolds.com for ticket information. So watch my special and then get ready to see some crap. Yeah, it's half-baked bullshit. April 2nd, I'm talking about this special. Dave! 1965! That's part of my rebuttal. It's bad. Rodney Glenn King was born in Holy Sacramento. Holy shit, no. Oh, my sorry. God. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, gosh. Oh, good Lord. This is going to be This tough. is a follow-up to our uh, Olympic up. episode. To our what? The, the Olympic episode. Right. The Olympic episode led into how the cops changed during the Olympics, and this is our follow-up. Oh, boy. I knew this one. This is, this is on my, like, list of ten I know are coming. <laughs> uh, uh, so he was born in Sacramento, California. Soon after, his family moved to Altadena, which is right near me. This is, don't make uh, it Where his you. parents... It's about me. Where his parents worked as house cleaners and medical custodians. Okay. Dad was an alcoholic who beat his kids with an extension cord. Come on, do some funny stuff. Uh, give me. Yeah. I, I, and, well, it sounds like we're ready to tollop. The intro. Uh, Rodney later wrote, quote, the first person I ever hated was my father. Oh, my God. Relatable. Me and Rodney King. I was just going to say. We are... Did his dad write Marin a letter? <laughs> dad brought Rodney and his brother to work to wash and buffer floors at the Pasadena Medical Center from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. most nights. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's just, you know, when you have kids, it's 1970-something, uh, so why not put them to work as if it's the 1800s? <sighs> Yeah. Why else have kids if you're not going to have them buffer floors at a medical center? Are they are they working or they're just like hanging? Well, he's making them work. Okay, interesting. Sorry, I was doing I was adjusting my camera, but that's great. It's what we call illegal. Mm. Until now, for some reason, Rodney started to do poorly in school. What do you think it was? Lack of motivation. Um, I think it was working till two a.m. every night. Huh. Interesting. Well, I, I'd, lo yeah. I'd love to, for people to email some other theories. He was getting maybe an hour of sleep every night. Holy shit. Is that good? It's bad. Welcome to a cult. Bad. Bad. Yeah. So teachers assumed he had a learning disability. <laughs> and they put him in special education classes. <laughs> Because he's tired. And then he, like, gets a good night's sleep. Because he's working at like, night. Now he's, we've really rehabilitated him. He's like, no, I slept. My dad got sick last night. He can't uh, go to work. So this led to him being bullied. It also meant he could not uh, play for the baseball team, the only part of school he really enjoyed. Man, when there's a comedic window on this, I am going to jump through it like I God. You've missed so many nah, the, I feel so like, far. I don't know if there's a lot of plays left on the field so far. So far, this has just been uh, just a treasure trove of hilarity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he started drinking and smoking weed at 11 years old. Fucking A. Which I did, too. I mean... Well, I remember he was on um, Celebrity Rehab. He was on that show. Oh, was he? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. In high school, a teacher went to bat for him and got, uh, got the school to let him on the baseball team. Then that teacher molested him. <sighs> do some uh, do some comedy stuff, kid. Um, You're the improv guy. I know. I just um, I um. Hmm? No, I'm trying to. There's some. There's something. I had I had a moment where I thought the teacher went to bat for him. And well, let me help. Baseball. Oh. Let me help. He was also molested by a cousin. As a senior, Rodney was working episode. a lot. Okay. <laughs> as a senior, Rodney was working a lot as a valet, a tree trimmer, a McDonald's cook. He was also drinking a lot. He dropped out of school then. Married his girlfriend. 
A few months later, he was arrested for reckless driving and uh, then beating his wife. Okay. I didn't know that. So he uh, pled no contest, and he got probation. You know, no contest is a weird option. Uh, uh, what's the it other? Is. What's the, what's the other <laughs> option? I'd like a contest, and then you have to sort of <laughs> compete with uh, with the judge or uh, the uh, the prosecution. Uh, I, I've always found that kind of funny to to think of it like that. Like, uh, how do you plead? Uh, guilty? Not guilty? No contest? I like a contest, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, hula hoop the judge. <laughs> I'd like to have a hula hoop competition <laughs> uh, contest against the judge. All right, Dave, whenever you're ready. Uh, uh. <laughs> this chair is driving me crazy. It's squeaking like a squeaker. Um, so he uh, he gets, at 24, he gets into an argument uh, with a shopkeeper in a convenience store in Monterey Park. Okay. Now, there were language differences. Sure. Uh, the guy said Rodney tried to rob him and threatened to beat him up. And Rodney, uh, Rodney says he was drunk and hungry and just trying to buy gum and food stamps with food stamps. What? Who's and hungry the guy and goes understand. for gum? Well, I mean, everybody has their thing. Sure, but it's not going to... That's, that's the opposite Have of Have you tried it? Yeah, I've been hungry and I've had gum, and I'm like, oh, my God, my stomach's now like, all right, food's coming. Have you tried to eat the gum? I used to swallow gum, yep. What? Yeah. Yeah, I used to swallow gum all the time. A teacher, I remember I had a teacher who was like, bro, what are you doing? I was like, doesn't matter. And he's like, nah, it's like terrible for you. I was like, buddy, I'm 14. Why? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just throw it out? You know, sometimes you're like, Ugh, garbage is all the way over yonder. You're like, my tummy's kind of a garbage can that the Lord put inside me. I was tossing in that. You can eat a lot of stuff and uh, treat it like trash. 